Hi everyone, my name is Leah. I'm your lead course instructor here at Advanced E-Clinical Training, and I want to welcome you to our last installment of the Anatomy and Physiology series. Our lesson today is going to be the integumentary system. All right. <clears throat> So the integumentary system, some functions um, include protection. So the skin protects deeper tissues from mechanical damage, chemical damage, ultraviolet radiation, um, as well as uh, bacteria and also uh, thermal or heat damage. Also, the integumentary system helps with temperature regulation, so our skin helps with heat loss or heat retention and is controlled by the central nervous system. Also, uh, the integumentary system helps with elimination. So the skin helps in secretion of urea and ureic acid uh, through uh, perspiration produced by the sweat glands. Also, um, this system helps as acts as a synthesizer. So what that means is our skin helps to synthesize vitamin D through modified cholesterol molecules in the skin by the sunlight. And then, of course, sensation. Uh, the integumentary system has sensory receptors that can recognize heat, cold, touch, pressure, and pain. The integumentary system includes, of course, our skin, our hair, our fingernails, our toenails, the sebaceous glands, and our sweat glands. So we'll start talking about the skin structures of this skin. Um, now the skin is composed of two kinds of tissue, the outer epidermis and then the underlying dermis. So you can see here in this, um, picture that the epidermis um, is the outer uh, part of the skin and it's comprised mostly of squalamus epithelium cells and it's that's capable of keratinizing or becoming hard and tough then underneath the epidermis we have the dermis and this underlying dermis mostly consists of dense connected tissue then underneath the dermis we have the subcutaneous tissue which is mostly fat So let's start uh, talking a little bit about the dermis. So the dermis includes a papillary layer, and um, this is um, this is the layer that's directly underneath the epidermis. So this layer contains endings of capillaries, lymph vessels, and sensory neurons. It has a loose network of connective tissue that helps to provide nutrients to the skin and also helps um, with sensory perception and temperature regulation. Next, we have the reticular layer, and this is the deepest skin layer. It contains blood vessels, sweat and oil glands, and deep pressure receptors. Next, we have the collagen. So collagen fibers are responsible for the toughness of the dermis. They also attract and, um, and bind to water, helping to keep our, uh, helping to keep our skin hydrated. Um, then we have the elastic fibers. Elastic fibers uh, does, of course, exactly what it sounds like it does. It gives our skin its elasticity when we are young. And unfortunately, as we age, the number of this of the collagen and elastic fibers decreases. Um, also, the subcutaneous tissue loses fat. Um, of course, there are blood vessels that are part of the dermis and that help to... Um, supply and keep the dermis alive. It helps also to maintain body temperature. Uh, and then of course there is the nerve supply. So the dermis has a rich um, nerve supply. Many of those nerve endings have specialized receptors um, that can help send messages back to the central nervous system when they are stimulated by environmental factors. So here we have the epidermis. In the epidermis, we have epithelial tissue. Um, and uh, the epidermis is avascular. So what that means, it, it has no blood supply of its own. Um, next, you have uh, 
the keratin sites, most of the cells in the epidermis are these um, keratinocytes, which produce keratin. It's a fibrous uh, protein that help make the epidermis uh, very tough for its um, protective uh, layer. So that's important. You have uh, the stridum basali, and that's the deepest layer of the epidermis, and it lies closer to the dermis, closest to the dermis. Um, it has uh, epidermal cells that receive nutrients from the dermis. Next, we have the stratum spinosum, and this is the layer of the epidermis found between um, the granulosum and the basali. And this layer is composed of polyhydral keratinocytes that join together with dermis, um, the desmomones. And then next underneath there, you have the stratum granulosum. And this layer becomes flatter and cre increasingly full of keratin. And last but not least, then you have the lucidum. And the lucidum is found in the palms of our hands and the soles of our feet, where the skin is hairless and thick. Continuing on with the epidermis, you have the stratum corneum, and this is the outermost layer. It's very thick and it accounts for about three quarters of the epidermal thickness. There's cornified cells and the shingle-like dead cells filled with keratin are known as cornified cells. Of course, we have the keratin, and this is a strong protein found in the stratum corneum, allowing it to protect the deeper cells from the hostile external environment. We have melanin, and melanin is a pigment that ranges in color from yellow to brown to black, and it is um, produced by cells called the melanocytes, found chiefly in the stratum basali. Next, we have the melanosomes, and the, as the melanocytes produce melanin, it accumulates melanin somes which are granules that move to the melanocytes where they are taken up um, by the nearby keratinocytes. Next in the integumentary system, we have hair and hair follicles because our hair is part of this integumentary system. So we all know what hair is. It's produced by our hair follicle um, and it is a flexible epithelial structure. We have the root, so the root is the part of the hair enclosed in the follicle. We have the shaft, so the hair shaft projects from the surface of the scalp or the skin. And then we have the formation, so hair is formed by a division of the strata and basali epithelium cells um, in the matrix of the hair bulb at the inferior end of the follicle. The composition so each hair is made up of a central core known as the medulla surrounded by the cortex layer. And then we have the cuticle. So the cuticle is the most heavily, heavily keratinized area, providing strength and helps keep the inner hair layers tightly connected. Continuing on with our hair and hair follicles. So hair pigment is created by melanocytes in the hair bulb that helps to produce hair color from pale blonde to pitch black. Um, our hair follicles are compound structures. The epidermal sheath, so the inner epidermal sheath is compo uh, composed of epithelial tissue and forms the hair. We have the dermal sheath, so the outer, outer dermal sheath is dermal connective tissue. And this dermal region helps to supply blood uh, to the epidermis. And then there's the papilla, which helps to provide the blood supply to the matrix of the hair ball. Moving on to our nails. So here, nail folds are the borders of the nail that, over, uh, that are overlapped by skin folds. We have the cuticle. The cuticle is that thick that thick proximal um, nail fold in, that is known as the cuticle. We have the nail bed. Um, the nail bed is actually the stratum basali of the epidermis extending beneath the nail. The nail matrix is responsible for the nail growth. 
and our nails are transparent and colorless, but they look pink because of the rich supply of lead. And the lanula, and this, um, the exception to the pinkish color of the nails is the region over the thickened nail matrix that appears as white um, or like a white crescent. So moving on to the cutaneous glands of the integumentary system. So, exo, so cutaneous glands, exocrine glands, um, they're all exocrine glands and release their secretions to the skin surface through ducts and fall into two groups, the sebaceous glands and the sweat glands. So sebaceous glands of or oil glands um, are found all over the skin except on the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet. Um, this, uh, the sebaceous glands produce sebum and that's a mixture of oily substances and fragmented cells and it helps to lubricate and keep the skin soft and moist. It also helps to prevent hair from becoming brittle. Next we have our sweat glands. Um, and they're widely, the sweat glands are widely distributed in the skin. And there are two types of sweat glands. We have the eccocrine glands. And these types of sweat glands are um, more numerous and found all over the body. They produce sweat um, in which mostly water, salts, vitamin C, metabolic waste, and lactic acid. These type of sweat glands also help with the body's heat uh, regulating system. And the last of the two sweat glands, we have the apocrine glands. And um, these glands are uh, co confined to the axillary and the genital areas of the body. And they were a little bit larger than um, the eccrocrine glands. Their secretions contain fatty acids and proteins, and they begin to function during puberty under the influence of androgens. So this uh, lesson here, the integumentary system was very short and sweet, um, not nearly as detailed as the others. So that's why I left it for last. But of course, um, you all know if you have any questions or concerns or if you need me to clarify anything with you, you can always e email me um, and I will get back to you just as soon as I can. Thanks so much. We'll see you again soon.